can't come out to the Indian reservations without uh, blowing some shit up real fast. <laughs> One left. The desert of Nevada is for people who find the rules and regulations of Las Vegas too restrictive. The state of Nevada is huge, but most people never see anything other than Reno or Vegas. Out here, anything goes. The reservations have their own laws. The brothels are secluded, and those in the mining community live by their own kind. Try it for a while. You might like it. Wild Wild West still exists out here. Right now we're driving 30, 40 minutes outside of Vegas to the Valley of Fire, Mwapa. Meet up with the Paiute tribe for the Paiute powwow. We're gonna make Indian tacos, which I'm pretty hyped about. But this is like a little Indian reservation that I used to come out to when I was a kid that my dad would take us out here a couple times a month for cigarettes and booze, because how cheap it is but they sell so many fucking fireworks, it's ridiculous. And we used to come out here and just blow shit up. I'm actually shocked that I still have all my fingers from all this, but it is what it is. What I know about Indians is just what I've seen in movies and this and that, and so I'm really excited to learn about their culture and their food. Hi! How's it going? I'm Brayden. I'm Carrie. Nice to meet you. This is insane. What's going on out here in the Valley of Fire? This is the Southern Paiute Veterans Pow Wow. I believe this is like the 21st annual powwow, a celebration where we have vendors who share their art, yeah. and then we have our food vendors. Do you think that maybe you could uh, show me around and show me what's going on out here? Yeah. What have we got here? Pickles and Kool-Aid. Do you just dump it onto the yeah. pickle? What kind of Kool-Aid do you like? Cherry. Can we get two pickles and then two cherry uh, Kool-Aids? Thank you. <laughs> oh man, this is fantastic. <laughs> it's just candy. Mm -hmm. Look at that, a bloody pickle. <laughs> yeah, that's real sour. Because you put a lot on That's really good though. <laughs> I've heard a lot about Indian tacos. I don't get how they're different than any other tacos. <gasps> I don't know, I've never oh. even heard of them. That's why I'm asking. Okay, okay, they're different because it's not like a hard taco or anything like that. It's made with fibrin. There's beans, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, onions. So it's almost like a flatbread pizza type situation. Yeah, kind of. I personally like to have salsa on top of it. Just gives it a little kick with it. And back here you can see that they're making fry bread. And we don't roll it. There's no such thing as a rolling pin. We just stretch it. We stretch it or flap it and we make it flat into a circle. Hi. How's it going, Brayden? Good, I'm Samantha. Nice to meet you. Where do we start for these tacos? Okay, first we're gonna use the fry bread dough. And I already have this for you. Okay. You're gonna take the dough and start stretching out the edges like this. You want to use some flour so that way it's not too sticky. I well, like my fried bread best? big. When it's like a pizza big. Ah, so for days. So now, slowly put it into the oil. Okay, so grab a plate right there. This is the pinto beans and ground beef. If you want, you can put sour cream, salsa. Homemade salsa? Yes, just... homemade. Okay, well I gotta try the homemade salsa. There you go. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy, but the claims are so high right now. Oh my God, they're good, you're right. That last one in my soul. The dough is so soft. You guys nailed it. I want to know what's going on over here. I kind of want to be part of that. Just remember, one, two, one, two. Can you show me? So it's just basically one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So forward, back, forward, back. Now with the beat. Da, 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 da. Good. See, you already added the hop. 
definitely out in the desert in the middle of nowhere and this is the Indian reservation they're not just from Las Vegas you know what I mean there's people from all the way from Canada that are here and from Arizona and Utah and this and that so I kind of yeah it's like I just like that they chose this as like their destination to meet up you know what I mean like outside of Las Vegas in the middle of nowhere <laughs> it's kind of rad This is like the type of area I would never want to run into a police officer. I would not want him to look at me and be like, you ain't from around here, are you, boy? We're heading a little bit more than 250 miles north of Las Vegas right now, into the middle of the desert. There's about 3,000 people who live in that round mountain area, and a third of those people work in the gold mine. Nevada is a right-to-work state. So these miners are some rough and tumble, hard working, hard drinking types. We're on our way to check out a local bar after a shift. Carver's is a gathering place for guys after work, where they come for food, booze, and around a pool. How's it going? Good, how are you? Braden. Curtis. Nice to meet you. There you go. I want to know what your favorite thing is, but now I see that it's just a burger. There's chicken strips and burgers on there. Let me get the chicken strips. Okay. Let me try the cheeseburger. Oh, you know what? Add bacon. Bacon cheeseburger. Ooh, and mushroom and Swiss, if I could. So do you think that there's any way maybe I can see how you guys yeah. operate back here? Yeah. Perfect. What's going on with that uh, meat? How you just press it in there like that? Yeah. You got a uh, exact system that you do, or? Basically, just throw it on there. What's your favorite thing to eat here? I like the burgers more than the chicken strips. Yeah? I don't know. I like that just Curtis, more Curtis right. disagrees. He likes the chicken strips more. Yeah. That's why I had to get both, just to try them out. But how are the people just in the whole city? It's a really small town, so basically everybody knows everybody, and there's not much like drama out here like there is in the bigger cities and stuff. Yeah, of course. I don't know. It's a fun place to live. Yeah, Brandon. And I've been to some of the best chefs in the world, and I really think that you kind of nailed this one. Thank you, Curtis. It was a fantastic meal. I'm gonna go check out this bar and see what you guys got. Well, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? My name's Todd. Brayden. So this is your whole establishment. The whole deal. Yep. A little bar separate from the cafe, but it's all in the same building. It was crazy because driving up here, leaving, like, I've been to Reno a million times, I've been taking the Salt Lake path, but I don't think I've ever taken this path where you just kind of go into the middle of the desert. The middle of Nevada. I know, right? I'm just out, th I'm, I'm lost out here. <laughs> I want to know a little bit, uh, mainly about the mining fields. The mine's been open since the late 70s, has never closed. Who's getting rich out of all this? Because this town is so small, and if everybody's kind of doing something and we all work for it, somebody has to be getting wealthy. Everybody gets paid here good top wages in this valley, um, decent insurance. It's a good family atmosphere. It's out away from a lot of the illegal activities you hear about in the news. I like the solitude of being out in the middle of nowhere, truthfully, myself. <laughs> Try it for a while. You might like it. Thank you again. You betcha. Perfect, man. I had such a good time. Good. It was a cool experience just to see and learn a little bit about Nevada that I didn't know. I knew it was a silver state and people mined gold and did everything all day, but I didn't realize to the scale that it's at in a little city of 3,000 people. Big things in small places. After seeing how miners live, I'm ready to find me some other gems out in this desert. Just an hour outside of Vegas is a county where prostitution is legal. Mr. Braden, how's it going? How you doing? My name is Gil, and I'm at your ride to uh, Sherry's Ranch. All right. And as discussed for the ride up, Jack and Coke. Ooh, thank you. Gil, you got to explain to me where are we going right now? 
We are going to Sherry's Ranch, which is a legal brothel in Nye County. And how close is that to Vegas? It's approximately 50 miles from downtown Las Vegas. They forget that it's actually legal. Even if you were a cop picking them up, you're just gonna drop them off at somewhere legal. The only thing that would be illegal is if you start doing dumb shit in the car on the way there. How are most of your customers that end up coming through here? Like, I, I, I maybe... picked up single females, couples, uh, and a majority of them are, are males. Majority yeah. of males? Is majority. there like an age group or? <laughs> I'd, I know I'd that... say eight, from 45 to 55 is a age range that, that's pretty consistent. It's, it's a very nice resort. They've got a 10 room hotel, a pool, tennis courts, volleyball courts. So it, it, it's a resort. Yeah. It's really nice. Nice. And the, uh, they have a bar area. And they also have a grill uh, that has amazing food. Do they go all the way down to like good seafood? They have, Even they have all steak the way and lobster. Down? They have steak, steak and, and lobster. lobsters on the menu. There's surf and turf there. Absolutely. Well, I guess I know what I'm gonna have to try, aren't I? That's that's how I'm gonna judge if you guys actually have the right brothel or not. You definitely gotta try the toss salad. Yeah. <laughs> and wow, we have it's arrived. Huge. It's fantastic. All right, Mr. Braden, welcome to Sherry's Ranch. Thank you. All right, we'll be entering through this far right hand door. Hi, welcome to Sherry's. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Let me show you around. Do girls sleep here for weeks, days, months? Is it? It depends on the girl. Some girls um, come to us from other countries, so they'll stay a couple of months uh, with us. Other girls live locally like in Las Vegas, and they'll stay like a week at a time. This is 60's bungalow. Oh yeah, this is extremely my everything. So the bungalows wow. are for uh, you and a girl, or a couple girls. I think we've had in one time, I think we've had maybe 15 girls in here. Just one guy? Yeah. Good for him. He was a fucking rock star. Good for him. <laughs> That's the only way to live, right? So from what I understand, you girls stay here for days, weeks, months at a time? Yes. Is there like points where you guys cook each other food or? What we started in the last two months was doing a grocery list of prepared meals, so like a meal. At a week at a time. Oh yeah? And then we all pitch in and it's, and it, you know, we can save money that way instead of eating out every day. The meal I'm making tonight is Riley's favorite. Yes, a chicken spinach roll ups. Ooh. Very so good. I take it you're the main chef then if every girl is instantly looking at you. <laughs> Red, come on, what do you cook? We're making jambalaya. <laughs> that all sounds great. We have another sous chef, ladies. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> chef Brayden, you, you definitely might want to add the bell pepper and the onion. The whole thing? I want the whole thing. Okay. Going in. It's going in. <laughs> Is that too much or is that? It's fine. We'll, yeah, we'll make Trust it Trust me, I like fatties, yeah. <laughs> so do you girls know everybody's kind of like diets, their... Yes, allergies and stuff. And when do we get to see you naked? As soon as dinner's over. Awesome. <laughs> You're the dessert? Of course. <laughs> I, I just want to get a rundown of what your day-to-day -day is. Every day is different around here. We're yes. in such a rural area that any day could be busy. It could be busy one day at 2 in the morning and the next day I'll be like, 10 o'clock at night or 5 o'clock in the evening. Don't tell me you're not hungry. Oh, I'm starving. That looks fantastic right there. I'm going to try a jambalaya, but you too. You like it? Mm-hmm. Good. I understand it's the oldest profession. It's a fantastic profession. Uh-huh. But when you were a kid, like, could you see that you were going to be working in a place like this? No, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> I was a bad teenager. <laughs> How bad? <laughs> Very. <laughs> I was a bad teenager too. My mother caught me getting finger banged on the hood of her car outside in broad daylight. <laughs> she called me a whore. Is that and is? Look at where I'm at now. <laughs> <laughs> is there any favorite things that you girls have? Like, I'm sure. I want to see her sit on your face while I ride the beautiful. <laughs> Good answer. She likes my ass. <laughs> when you're ready to get naked and have some fun, you let us know. Absolutely.
Wow. That was a fun, fun place. Right. Are you ready to head back? I am, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey boss, I can drop you off at your hotel or if there's another venue that you'd like me to take you to, I can arrange that. I got a perfect spot, if you don't mind. Literally just a couple exits down. Pretty much the way I see it though is that really there's nothing better than taking some good guns and blowing some shit up right after an insane morning like we've had. So I'm headed 30 minutes south of Las Vegas to the Pro Gun Club. This is just a little hole off the freeway that I've known about for a little bit, so I'm excited. I got this while signing up for a really cool little club card at one of the hotels. Okay. And Mr. Gobbles has been coming around everywhere with me, and I figure that today is his day that he needs to disappear. Can show our appreciation for him? Exactly. Hi. <laughs> There you go, buddy. Oh, shit. <laughs> there it is. Oh, just push it down. Woo just tell oh. me that's not the funnest thing ever. <laughs> smells like grilled pineapple. Oh, I love it. It does smell like grilled pineapple. I'm going to go for gobbles on this one. Outstanding. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> if I hit that, I'm gonna be honestly fucking shocked. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh man, blowing things up is so much fun. All right, brother. Let's see this one. It's the funnest gun I've ever shot. Three, two, one. <laughs> Just know that if you're ever in a gunfight with me, nine out of 10 times, you win. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> right through the ACDC almost too. No. <laughs> that's the funnest gun I've ever I shot. I don't know who hit it, but you gotta, wear, you gotta sport that. Oh, definitely. And that's how we do. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, this place is fun, right? Yeah. Something about shooting giant machine guns got me all sentimental. Maybe it was the adrenaline. Maybe it was the fact that Gil was force feeding me Jack and Cokes all day. If there's a thing you need to know about Vegas, it's that this town isn't any one thing. There isn't one kind of food. There's barbecue, high class dining, and free strip club buffets. There isn't one culture. There's the people who've been here for decades, and there's the transplants who are just trying to make a name for themselves. Next time you come to my town, don't do that same touristy bullshit everybody else does. If you need to eat surf and turf, get off the strip and go do it with some of them working girls. If you want to eat at the best restaurants in Vegas, sometimes it's in a strip mall in a shit part of town. So quit fucking around and get your ass here. Have some fun and make a mess. But whatever you do, do not pet those wild donkeys. Those jackasses will bite your fucking arm off. <laughs>